The MatePad 11 is the best tablet you can get to date, and I will tell you why in this video. So let's get started. The MatePad 11 comes with an aluminum body and in just one simple color called matte gray. Just like known from Huawei, the construction is pretty awesome and light for an 11 inch tablet. The buttons feel great and are placed in a way that makes sense. So you got your power button on the top in portrait mode or the left top in horizontal mode. The volume rocker is on the right side in portrait and top left edge in the horizontal mode. Next to it, a bit off to the right, you can find the spot to attach the Huawei M Pencil. The display is an 11 inch 2560 by 1600 pixels IPS one with a refresh rate of 120 hertz. Together with the powerful Snapdragon 865, that is a flagship processor from last year, that results in an overall very smooth and fluid user experience. Above the display, integrated into the bezel, you can find the 8 megapixel selfie cam, which shoots good photos and can be used nicely for video calls as well with good noise floor in bright conditions. So this is a little test with the uh, Huawei MatePad 11's front-facing camera. You can see backlit situation, but it's still exposing on my face. If I move around a bit, you, the exposure might change a bit. If I move away, this will go away as well. I'm in a normal room condition, so you can see the noise floor is pretty low, and I think it's, the quality is also good for voice calls and video chats as well. And I think also the position of the webcam is good, so I can look into the webcam, can look on the screen itself and you still can see me so I don't have to look like up there where it was on the MatePad Pro for example. And this is by the way also the audio quality that you can expect from the Huawei MatePad 11. Uh, right now with the window open, if I close this, uh, you can get, of course, a better quality. It has like various different microphones there. I think there are three microphones on the device itself to give you also a nice video call quality. So no problems, no issues with this on the MatePad 11. You can also use the front camera as authentication with its face recognition option. This, however, is 2D only and not the safest, though the only convenient way to unlock your tablet as there's no fingerprint option. The back camera features 13 megapixels and is housed in a little camera bump on the back together with an LED flash and a microphone hole. You can use the back facing camera of the MatePad 11 also for vlogging style videos just like I'm doing right now. You have to use both of your hands otherwise it will become a little bit unstable I would say. But it also features autofocus so I can hold here this and this is i think coffee medicine and it should focus should be able to focus on this as well and it has a back facing microphone which is also good to pick up noises especially if you want to film someone or something and yeah it can get the noise as well um, for vlogging situations i would really rather use my phone because it has a better camera but in emergency situations you can use the matepad uh, 11 spec facing camera as well for doing some nice photos and also videos. The MatePad 11 is a multimedia powerhouse with four speakers on the device tweaked by Harman Kardon. You get very immersive sound with good bass and clear highs. I enjoy watching movies on this little tablet. For streaming services, Huawei includes White Wine Level 1, which allows you to play back HD videos on Netflix, for example. But you'll also have the option to edit videos with this device, which has the power you need. Rendering videos out in KineMaster or Filmora Go HD was always quick and way faster than on my laptop without a dedicated graphics card. Additionally, to the tablet itself, you can get a magnetic keyboard 
and the M pencil that both were included in my pre-order unit here. The software on the MatePad 11 is Harmony OS 2.0, which is Huawei's own operating system that is compatible with Android 10. It allows you to use all Android applications that don't require Google Play services. The lack of Google services is not a big deal on a tablet, I would say. It is more a big of a deal on a phone. I never had issues using Google services via the included browser if necessary. The system allows you to split applications in half and add a floating window on top if necessary. Multitasking is really good. Even applications that are historically very bad optimized for tablets run fine with Huawei's implementation, which allows you to use the whole screen estate as much as possible by splitting two pages on a tablet com incompatible app. The 7250 mAh battery is good for a heavy workday and should last you one day without big issues. If you only occasionally read some news and watch some YouTube videos, it will last even longer, up to three days I managed one time. It all depends on your usage. If the battery runs out, you can charge the device with the included 22.5W charger, which takes around one hour and a half to fully charge the tablet. All in all, for 399 euros, you get a very, very good tablet with last year's flagship processor, 6 gigabytes of RAM, which should be enough for almost everything, good speakers and multimedia capabilities. In the early bird edition, you get a pen and a magnetic keyboard as well that can act as a stand, which is pretty awesome. That is a hell of a deal. And for everyone searching for a tablet, I highly recommend pro this product. Don't get scared by the lack of the Google services. Usually if you don't have a specific workflow, you really don't need them on a tablet. When it comes to the free software indicator, which evaluates from zero to 10 how freedom respecting a product is, zero would be not at all, and 10 GNU Stallman approved, the Huawei MatePad 11 scores a two out of 10. Huawei offers you the source code of its operating system, but the bootloader is closed, so you cannot install your own operating system and are fully dependent on the manufacturer to deliver updates in the future. Talking about updates, I got one major new update so far, which fixed some annoying bugs with Bluetooth and added some new features, just like the detection of my FreeBuds 4 as super device, which allows you easy pairing with them.